good morning my dear students so we have finished the carbohydrate module now we are moving to another topic that is amino acids it is a very simple topic and it is easy so we proceed to the next module that is amino acids so we move to amino acids we know in any organic compound if it contains a cooh group that is a carboxylic group it is called an organic acid for example ch3 cooh is acetic acid or it is a organic acid like that if any organic compound is having a nh2 group nh2 group it is called a amine so any amines contains a nh2 group if an organic compound contains both nh2 group as well as cooh group it is called an amino acid so we could define amino acids are any organic molecule which contain a basic amino group that is a nh2 group and an acidic carboxylic group that is cooh group so if any compound contains one or more amino group and one or more acid group it is called a organic acid by general formula we could represent an amino acid as r c nh2 is there cooh is there so this is the cooh group acidic group and this is the nh2 group which is the basic group so any organic compound which contains both nh2 group as well as cooh group are called amino acids and we know in our biological systems these amino acids play important role for biological reactions see these are the 20 common amino acids that we consider as very important amino acids they are see here one by one we are there alanine glycine isoleucine leucine for proline valine histidine glutamine etc see these are the important 20 acids so this chart shows which is aliphatic which is aromatic which is acidic or which is basic etc so this is an important guide to identify easily which are the classifications of or different classifications of amino acids so amino acids are classified or arranged as a common guide for you take down Moving to the classification of amino acids. Basically, amino acids are classified into two. They are essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Some of the amino acids are synthesized by the body, while some of the amino acids are to be supplied to the body. So, depending upon the amino acids synthesized by the body they are classified into two they are essential amino acids and non essential amino acids see here amino acids are classified into two they are essential and non essential amino acids 
essential amino acids cannot be made by the body or synthesized by the body. That means this we have to supply from the food. The body will not synthesize these amino acids. So we have to supply the, um, these amino acids through food materials. They are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, etc. These are the examples for essential amino acids. Then what are non-essential amino acids? That we need not supply, but our body will produce. So the body will automatically produce these essential, so these amino acids reason for our biological process. And they are called non-essential amino acids. Examples are alanine, arginine, asparagine, etc. See, this is an important question. Distinguish between essential and non-essential amino acids and give examples. So, nine essential amino acids that our body cannot be synthesized but to be supplied through diet are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. Take down. Now, depending upon the acidic or basic character, amino acids are classified into three. They are neutral amino acids, acidic amino acids and basic amino acids. We know amino acids contains both acidic COH group and basic NH2 group. So, if an amino acid contains one NH2 group and one COH group, basically the amino acid becomes neutral because there is one amino acid which is basic, sorry, one amino group which is basic and another acid group which is acidic. So, the amino acid becomes neutral. If an amino acid contains two COH group and one NH2 group, 2 COH group and 1 NH2 group. So, acidic group is more. Hence, it is an acidic amino acid. If the molecule contain 2 amino group and 1 COH group, it is called a basic amino acid. See here, if the amino acid contain 2 acid group and 1 amino group, it is called Acidic amino acid. Example, see aspartic acid. I have only one NH2 group, but I have two COH group, one here, another here. So two COH groups are there. So this is only one NH2. So this is basically acidic. This is acidic. See here, lysine. We have two NH2 group. In lysine, we have two NH2 group, but only one COH group. So, naturally it will be a basic amino acid. See here, in case of alanine, one acidic group and one basic group. That means they are neither acidic nor basic. So, they are neutral amino acids. So, the second classification is depending upon the number of acid or amino group. They are classified into acidic amino acid having more number of acid group basic amino acid having more number of basic group and neutral amino acid. In examination, they will ask examples. Now we move to the preparation of amino acid. Preparation of amino acid. See, amino acid could be prepared simply, easily by nucleophilic substitution reactions of alpha halo acids. If 
I take an alpha halo acid and treating with ammonium carbonate or ammonium hydroxide. This is a alpha halo acid. I have a COH group here. This is the alpha carbon atom, first carbon atom. There we have a chlorine atom, chlorine atom. So when an alpha halo acid is treated with ammonium carbonate or ammonium hydroxide, this Cl will be eliminated out and NH2 group will be attached there. So we'll get NH2, CH2, COOH. So the first method of preparation is by treating alpha halo acid with ammonium hydroxide or ammonium carbonate. This is the first method of preparation for any alpha amino acids. Take down. The second method is Strucker synthesis. Very important. Strucker synthesis. What is Strucker synthesis? In Strucker synthesis, we will take an aldehyde and we treat with ammonia so that we will get a imine. In the first step, we take an aldehyde, we treat with ammonia so that we will get a imine. So then we use HCN or NACN so that the cyanide minus ion, CN minus ion attacks the protonated imine. So the resulting amino nitrile is hydrolyzed to form the acid. See here, I have an aldehyde here. I will treat this aldehyde with ammonia so that I will get a imine. Then I will treat with HCN so that I will get a nitrile. See here, this carbon atom is having C triple bond N and this carbon atom is having NH2. So this is C double bond or aldehyde carbon atom. That aldehyde carbon atom first reacts with C double bond O to form NH, which again reacts with HCN to form CH3, CNH2, CNH. Any cyanide on hydrolysis, in the third step, we will carry out hydrolysis so that we will get the acid group there. So we could simply say Strucker synthesis is the reaction by which an aldehyde is treated with ammonia and HCN followed by hydrolysis will give you an amino acid. This is an important reaction to obtain amino acid which is called Strucker synthesis. Very important. Take down. Now see another method for the preparation of amino acid. This is an important method for the preparation of amino acid. It is called Gabriel's thalamide synthesis. Gabriel's thalamide synthesis. See here, we are taking potassium thalamate. This is potassium thalamate. The derivative of thalic acid. Potassium thalamide. So, thalic acid derivative. And we treat with a halo ester. So we could treat with any halo ester here so that the halogens and K of potassium thalamide, the halogen and Cl, so uh, K of the potassium thalamide undergo reaction so that the ester gets added to the thalamide. So we get a ester added thalamide. This on hydrolysis will give you thalic acid and amino acid. Here I have a alpha halo ester so that I will get a glycine. So depending upon the ester that we are taking with the corresponding amino acid we will get. 
So, in Gabriel's thalamide reaction, the reaction is very simple. We take potassium thalamide, treat with haloesters and subsequent hydrolysis using acid or base will give you the corresponding as amino acid and thalic acid. So this method is very easy and very important. It is called Gabriel's thalamide synthesis for amino acid. Now we have to see the structure of amino acid. It is very interesting the structure of amino acid. We know amino acid contains NH2 group and COOH group. So when a compound is having acidic COOH group and basic NH2 group, usually the compound will be insoluble in water because this is an organic compound. Amino acid is an organic compound which should be soluble in non-polar solvents. But amino acids are easily soluble in water. Another interesting thing is that when we take the IR spectrum of amino acid, we will not get a characteristic band for NH2 group or COH group. When we take the IR spectrum of a amine, example CH3NH2, we will get a characteristic band or peak corresponding to NH2 group. Similarly, if we take any acid and take the IR spectrum, we will get a characteristic band of COH. But it is observed that for amino acids, when we subject it to IR spectrum, we will not get characteristic band of NH2 group or COH group. That means there is a difference in their structure. So we have to see how we could explain this. See here, this is an amino acid. It is having NH2 group as well as COOH group. I am taking a simple amino acid having one COOH group and one NH2 group. See here, this nitrogen is having a lone pair of electron. NH2 group is basic because nitrogen is having a lone pair of electron. And we know COH group is acidic because C double bond of O minus is formed. So we know there exists a resonating structure C double bond of O minus. And H plus will be easily eliminated because carboxylate anion is more stable than carboxylic acid. So what happens is that this H plus from the COH group leaves that end and moves to the lone pair of electron present in nitrogen so that this end get a COO minus charge and this nitrogen giving the lone pair of electron to H plus get a positive charge. That means Basically, this molecule is neutral, having a negative and a positive charge, equal number of negative and positive charge. But when we observe, the molecule is having dipole or two charges, positive and negative charges. So, in amino acids, amino acids 
COH group and NH2 group exist as NH3 plus group and CO minus group. That means there is no characteristic COH group and there is no characteristic NH2 group. Instead of NH2 group we have NH3 plus and instead of COH group we have COO minus group. That means amino acid undergo internal arrangement. So internal transfer of hydrogen ion occurs from COH group to NH2 group. So that the COOH group becomes COO minus and the NH2 group becomes NH3 plus. That means amino acid have two dipolar ends. One is a negative end that is CO minus and another is a positive end that is NH3 plus. This type of molecules which have positive and negative charge but the molecule is neutral. Basically this molecule is neutral. Why? Because we have one negative and one positive. But when we see here the molecule is having positive end and negative end. Such a type of molecules are called sitter ion. Sitter is a W I T T E R. Sitter ion. So we could say sitter ions are molecules having positive and negative ends, but the molecule is basically neutral or the net charge of the molecule is neutral. So amino acids exist as sitter ions rather than amine and acid group. That is why we are not getting the characteristics peak of COH or NH2 group. You got the point? Very, very important. Take down. So we have seen amino acids exist as sitter ions. It's a W I T T E R sitter ions. That means they have positive end and they have negative end, but the molecule is neutral. Now see here, this is a sitter ion. If I am adding H plus ion, see H plus ion. What will happen? This H plus ion will attract the O minus end. So that I will get a COH group here. And the amino acid become positively charged. Or it becomes a cation. See here. We know when pH 7 it is neutral. This is pH 7. When I am adding acid. Acid means pH less than 7. Base means pH greater than 7. So when I am adding H plus ion, the excess of H plus ion from the acid attack the COO minus of the sitter ion, resulting the formation of a cation. That means in solution, if I want the cationic form, what should I do? I should add H plus ion so that I will get a positively charged ion. If I want negatively charged ion, what will do? I will add base. Base. OH minus ion. When I add OH minus ion, what will happen? This OH minus ion will abstract H plus from NH2. H plus from NH3. NH3 plus. So that I will get a anion. Anion. So, depending upon the pH condition, we could have anion or cation. So, the sitter ion formation could be converted to anion or cation at low pH 
or at high pH. High pH means basic conditions, pH greater than 7, basic condition. So the OH minus will come, it will abstract the H plus from NH3 plus, so that H2 will be formed. As a result, we have anion. Listen here carefully. So this is the citer ion. I am adding acid. So H plus will come and ZO minus will be abstracted there. As a result, I will get a cation. Similarly, when I take OH minus ion, the OH minus ion will abstract H plus from NH3 plus to form NH2 CO minus. So depending upon the pH, I could have anion and cation from the sitter ion of the amino acid. So amino acid exists as sitter ion and it could be converted to cation or anion depending upon the pH conditions. So my dear students, thank you for another session being with you. Prepare the notes from the Moodle and prepare for the examination. So we meet again next Thursday. Till then, bye, stay safe, see you. Thank you.